Good morning, kindergarten. I hope you guys had a great Monday. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our morning meeting, and we're gonna start with our morning message. Good morning, kinder crew. Today is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. Let's fix the sentences. So there's something wrong or multiple things wrong in each of these sentences. And this is gonna be important to remember as we are continuing on with our writing unit because today we're gonna to be starting to write our sentences in our books. So it's always important to remember our writing rules, but you're really gonna be using them today during writing. So let's go ahead and look here at our sentences and see what we need to fix. So this first sentence here says, I like popcorn. So before I fix anything, I want you to think, what do you notice about this sentence that needs to be changed? All right, so the first place I'm gonna look is at the beginning of my sentence. And who remembers? When we are starting our sentences, what type of a letter do we need to use? It needs to be a capital letter. It needs to be a capital letter. So I'm going to fix this and I'm going to make this a capital I. I like popcorn. All right. So let's look and see what else we need to change in our sentence. So we have our two finger spaces. So that looks great. Let's look at the rest of our sentence. So popcorn. Do you see anything in the word popcorn that we need to change? Hmm. Well, popcorn is not the beginning of our sentence and it's also not a name, so it should not be a capital P. So I'm gonna cross this off and I'm gonna do a lowercase p for popcorn. And then let's look at the end of our sentence. We're missing something, what are we missing? What goes at the end of all of our sentences? A period. So we need to make sure we have a period at the end of our sentence. All right, let's look at our next sentence. You are my friend. Hmm, what do you notice? What do you notice? All right, let's go back to the beginning of the sentence. The beginning of the sentence, we do not have a capital letter. Uh-oh, you is starting with a lowercase. So we need to go ahead and make this a capital Y, okay? And then this looks really smushed together. Do you remember when we were learning about writing sentences and we had all of our friends up here that got squished together and we said, words don't like that. They don't like being squished together. Well, you and R are really close. So we are missing our two finger space. So I'm going to change it. I'm going to rewrite you down here and I'm going to make sure I have my space and then I'm going to write R. You are my friend. Move over to this side. So you are my friend. Anything else you notice? Hmm. Oh, at the end of our sentence, what do we need? A period. All right, and our last sentence down here. Can you play piano? Can you play piano? Let's see, what are we missing in that sentence? Well, let's look at the beginning of our sentence first. The word can. Are we missing anything here? Is anything wrong that we need to change? Yes, the C needs to be a capital C. So I'm gonna change that, make it a capital C. Can you play piano? Okay, we have our spaces. All of these letters are lowercase, which is correct. And at the end of our sentence, listen to the way that I say this sentence. Can you play piano? Hmm, so we do need our punctuation at the end, but is it gonna be a period? It's not gonna be a period. I'm asking a question, can you play piano? So I need to have a question mark. 
Awesome, great job, kindergarten. Let's go ahead and move into our calendar. Oh, and of course, love Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Whalen. Can't forget that part. All right. All right. Yesterday was the 23rd day of March. So today is the 24th day of March. Yesterday was our 133rd day of school. So today is our 134th day of school. What day of the week was it yesterday? Yesterday was Monday. So that means today is Tuesday. And tomorrow will be Wednesday. Awesome job. And let's remember our two sight words for this week. Our first sight word is if. Hopefully you came up with some great sentences using the word if. And our second sight word of this week is eat, eat. And hopefully we were able to come up with some sentences for eat also. Let's go ahead and get started with our lessons. Readers. You guys have been doing a great job becoming avid readers. So we've become avid fiction readers, avid nonfiction readers, and today we're gonna to talk about being avid poetry readers because since we're wrapping up this unit, I wanted to do something special and something kind of celebratory to finish our avid readers unit. And poetry is often used in celebrations. People recite poems at weddings, at graduations. A lot of the birthday cards that you receive often have poems in them. And so I thought that would be a really great way for us to wrap up our unit about being avid readers. So when we're looking at poetry, poetry is different than the other two types of books that we've been looking at, fiction and nonfiction. With poetry, it's kind of like singing a song because you notice when you say poetry, it goes along with a beat. So readers, what we're gonna talk about today is how to read poetry and what avid poetry readers do. So we're gonna look at some poems together and we are going to analyze the words and then we're also going to learn how to read those poems. The first poem we're going to look at is a poem that I'm pretty sure most of you know, and that is the Itsy Bitsy Spider. So remember that avid poetry readers, they read a poem over and over again until the tune is right, the rhythm is right, and the feeling is right. And because we know this poem, I have a feeling you guys already know the tune that this poem is usually sung to. So we're gonna go ahead and read this poem, and I want you to do it like you learned it, which should sound like a song. So at home, I want you to go ahead and sing this poem along with me. The itsy bitsy spider crawled up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. You guys sounded great reading that poem. So we're gonna look at another poem next that you might not have seen before. So I'm gonna give you some tips for reading that poem just like we did the Itsy Bitsy Spider. So the first thing that avid poetry readers do is they read the words. The second thing that avid poetry readers do is they think about the poem. They think about what's going on in the poem and then that helps them to number three, match the beat of the poem and also their tone of voice. So if something happy is going on in the poem, obviously your tone of voice is going to be happier. If something kind of sad is happening, maybe you're talking a little bit slower. So we need to make sure that we read the words, think about the poem and what's happening, and then we can match the beat of the poem. So we're gonna look at a new poem right now called The Swing, and we're gonna work on using these tools to read that poem just like a song, like we did for the Itsy Bitsy Spider. This poem is called The Swing, and it was written by a very famous poet named Robert Louis Stevenson. 
And I don't know about you, but just by looking at the title, I already have an idea what this poem is about. If you think you know what this poem is about, go ahead and say it out loud. Hopefully a lot of you said that this poem is about swings and you probably have your own experience of going up on the swings. So let's keep that in mind as we begin reading the words of the poem. So we're gonna go ahead and start with step one, read the word. So you can go ahead and join in at home if you can. How do you like to go up in a swing? Up in the air so blue. Oh, I do think it is the pleasantest thing ever a child could do up in the air and over the wall till I can see so wide, rivers and trees and cattle and all over the countryside, till I look down on the garden green, down on the roof so brown, up in the air I go flying again, up in the air and down. So we want to reread this well, that's what avid poetry readers do, so we need to figure out what is really happening in this poem. So let's look back at the poem and talk about it. What do you think this poem is saying? So hopefully you thought about the fact that it's about being high up on a swing and you can see a lot of things. It's like you're going up and down on the swing and you're having so much fun. So now that we know what the poem is about, we're gonna read it again and try to read it with rhythm, okay? And I want you to think about what words we're gonna say in a special way. If one, some are gonna be louder, softer, slower, or faster, okay? So when, you, when we're reading this poem again, I want you to think about that. Think about what words we might need to emphasize. How do you like to go up in a swing? Up in the air so blue. Oh, I do think it is the pleasantest thing ever a child can do. Up in the air and over the wall till I can see so wide, rivers and trees and cattle and all over the countryside, till I look down on the garden green, down on the roof so brown. Up in the air I go flying again, up in the air and down. So hopefully you noticed that I was reading that poem to a beat. And hopefully the rhythm sounded good to you because we want to make sure, again, we're reading our poem to a beat. And the beat that I read it to, did it sound happy or sad to you? I want you to think, did that beat sound happy or sad? Hopefully you agree with me in that it sounded happy. So we really wanted to emphasize that because that shows how special being on a swing can be. So when, the way that we read a poem can help you understand what it's about. So looking at this and looking at the words that we might want to emphasize would be up, like you're going up in the swing, pleasantest, um, over the countryside. So looking at those words, and thinking about the poem really helped us to match the beat and to sing this poem in a happy way, so to a happy rhythm. So I want you guys to practice this today with some of your own poems. So now readers, what you're going to do is you are going to choose your own poem. So a lot of times nursery rhymes are poems, so Hickory Dickory Duck, um, Little Bo uh, Peep, Mary had a little lamb. So you can use any of those nursery rhymes or another poem that you might know or like, or you could look one up online with your parents. So you're gonna choose one poem and I want you to use the three steps that we learned today. You're gonna read the poem, you're gonna think about the words in the poem, and then you're gonna match the beat. So then what I want you to do is you're gonna record yourself either audio or you can do a video recording and post it on Class Dojo of you reading this poem. So it doesn't have to be a very long poem, but I wanna hear how you guys can sing the poems and match the beat. Writers, you guys did a great job on your nonfiction webs. You included some really great facts and I have already learned so much about the topics that you chose. So hopefully we remember why we were writing our nonfiction webs and that was to plan the nonfiction books that we were going to write. So today and for the rest of this week, you're gonna work on taking the information from your nonfiction web and turning it into a book. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and show you 
how to take the information from your web and put it into a book. And I have uploaded the pages that you'll need to make your book. So you have a cover page and then four pages to write your four facts. But if you don't have a printer at home, that is totally okay. You can use any paper that you have at home. So we're going to go ahead and get started looking at how we can take our nonfiction web and put it into our books. So our first page, and I know you guys have seen these before because we've used them for our other pieces of writing, our first page here is our cover page. So we need to think of a good title for our books. So for my book, since my topic is about Disney, I'm going to call my book All About Disney. And remember, since this is the title of my book, all of my words are going to start with a capital letter. All right, all about Disney. And then down here, written and illustrated by, that's you. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my name down here. And now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with my pictures, but here is where you would draw a picture of your topic. And remember, we've talked about how our cover page really draws in our readers. So we want to make sure to make our cover page colorful with lots of detail and obviously about our topic. If my topic's about Disney, I'm not going to draw a picture of a unicorn or of a mountain or of a lollipop. I'm going to draw a picture of something that tells my reader this book is is about Disney. And again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I don't want to leave you guys with an hour long writing lesson, but I'm just going to give you an example. So for example, if mine is all about Disney, I could draw a picture of Mickey Mouse. And obviously I would do his face, I would do a background color. You can decorate the outside of the cover page. So really make this colorful and detailed to draw your writer in. Now your next page is where you are going to start writing your facts. So now I'm going to look at my nonfiction web so that I can remember what my facts were. And I'm going to look at the bottom of this page and you can see there is a number on the bottom of this page. It's the number one. Just like on our webs, our facts were numbered one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to use my number one fact for my first page. And my fact says the first movie was Snow White. So I wrote on mine first movie equals Snow White. And that is not a complete sentence. So I need to change it a little bit and I'm going to write it in a complete sentence. So in my book, I'm going to write the first movie Disney released into theaters was Snow White. So again, remember this morning we went over the things that we need in complete sentences. So a capital letter at the beginning, spaces between our words, punctuation at the end. So most likely it'll be a period. And then I also capitalized things that were named. So Disney is the name of the company and Snow White is the name of the movie. So that's why those were capitalized. And then obviously I'm going to draw a picture here. Again, I'm not going to draw the picture right now um, because it would take a little too long. But because my first fact is about Snow White, that's what I could draw a picture of. I could draw a picture of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And you can look up pictures online to help you copy. So feel free to use um, examples to help you with your pictures. 
So now, at the bottom of this page, it is number two. So number two is going to be my fact number two on my web, which says founded in 1923. Again, that was not a complete sentence, so I need to make sure to change it a little bit. So I'm going to write Disney was founded as a company in 1923. All right, so for this, again, I could draw a picture of things that are Disney related. I could try to draw a picture of Walt Disney, maybe um, an office building to show that it's a company. So that's how I would write my sentence for my fact number two. And you're gonna continue to do that with fact number three and fact number four, using your nonfiction web to remind you of what your facts were and you wanna make sure to draw a detailed picture on each page. So you're gonna have the rest of the week to do this. So take your time, you can do one page Page a day you can do more than one page a day if you would like but really make sure to pay attention to um, our correct sentence um, structures so remember what makes writing easy to read and then also remember to make your pictures detailed and beautiful to draw your readers in for your math review page for today here are the problems that you're gonna do the first problem says, which picture shows more than four stars? So which picture here has more than four? So you're going to continue counting on from four, and that'll be your hint. If it goes past four, then it's more than four. And for number two, you are going to choose which object is longer than the marker. So you have your marker up here and then you're gonna look at the other items and choose the one that is longer. Now let's move on to our math lesson for today. For your math lesson today, you are going to be comparing things that are taller or shorter or as tall as. So we're gonna compare some items together right now and then in your math practice and reteach pages, you're gonna be looking at some pictures and choosing the item which is taller. So let's go ahead and look at our first items here. And I have cloud and toad. So we're going to look at cloud and toad and we're going to line them up next to each other. And which one is taller? Which one is taller? Is toad taller or is cloud taller? Hmm. Cloud is taller than toad. Awesome job. All right. The next two items we are going to look at. Whoops. We are going to look at this pen and the pointer. Which item is taller, the pen or the pointer? Which item is taller? The taller item is the pointer. Awesome job. All right, and our last items, we have a red stick and a green stick. Which item is taller? The green stick is as tall as the red stick. They are the same height. So the red stick is as tall as the green stick. The green stick is as tall as the red stick. Neither one is taller than the other. All right, mathematicians. Keep up the great work, K1. I am so proud of you guys. I miss you a ton, but you guys are still learning so much, and I can't wait until we get to see each other again. So have a wonderful Tuesday, and I will see you back here tomorrow for some more lessons.